Let's talk about urban heat islands. I have here a little house. The side that's painted white is highly reflective, and our model of the sun is this really uh, hot light. And we're gonna take its temperature. The temperature is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's try the temperature of this dark side. 118 degrees Fahrenheit, over 30 degrees warmer. The paved areas absorb more light than their surroundings and re-radiate that heat to the environment, keeping it warm during extreme heat waves and not cooling down over the evenings. But there's something we can do in cities to keep them cooler, and that's to plant trees and vegetation. So let's take a look at our cute little tree here, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Turns out that plants and trees have a lot of water in them, and the water has a really interesting property called evapotranspiration. That's a fancy name for tree sweat. I have here a model of uh, an urban environment. It's a balloon, the bottom has water in it, and the top has only air. I'm going to take our source of heat and put it onto the water. Water has a really high heat capacity. That means you can put a lot of heat into water without it changing its temperature very much. You can see that there's a scorch mark on the bottom of the balloon because we heated the air below it, but the temperature of the water barely changed. On the other hand, air does not have as high a heat capacity. So if I take the heat source and put it next to the air, the balloon pops. So let's think about what all of this means for urban planning. Some neighborhoods in Boston and its surrounding areas were up to 15 degrees warmer than the coolest areas during extreme heat events. That's a huge difference and it tells us that some communities are experiencing heat waves disproportionately and that stresses electrical grids, human health, and social systems. And that helps us think about what we can do about it. The Museum of Science is working with our partners at the Mystic River Watershed Association, Green Roots, and the Metropolitan Area Planning Council to gather data in and around communities up and down the Mystic River watershed. And what we've found so far is that some areas are experiencing much higher vulnerabilities to heat and air quality. We'll be sharing our data, bringing some of our community partners' voices, including you, about how to keep our communities cooler and safer in a changing climate.